<laughs> the August 27, 2018 uh, workshop of the Clay County School Board will come to order. Um, I don't know if we have any citizens here. I think we have staff here. You're all welcome. Wesley. Oh, Wesley, you're here. You're the citizen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad to have you, Wesley. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll start with uh, item number one, the one and only item, draft agenda review for the regular meeting on September 6, 2018. Uh, I'll turn it over to Superintendent Davis. Thank you, and good morning. Thanks to everybody for adjusting your time on the you know, to come in and review this so that we'll start immediately. The first uh, first 12 are under the public hearing of the budget. This is the same review that uh, we had before, so this would be a public hearing for any budget concerns. We'll go uh, directly into C1, that's the recognitions. We'll have recognitions of signing of the ratification for um, the CCEA contract along with CESPA's contract as well. C1, we'll go directly to, this is a minutes for the board workshop for July 23rd, special meeting for the tw July 23rd, um, uh, both in the midday and then in the July, special meeting for the July 31st, along with the regular meeting for August the 2nd. C2 is the public hearing for, uh, for the, uh, uh, this is public hearing for um, a consolidation of a, a claims against the school board versus uh, Asenio, is that how I say it? Asensio. Okay, Asensio. This proposed settlement against the school board uh, with this with this uh, claim. It's not a public hearing, though. Sorry no. about this. I don't know why this is. We had changed this. Does it say public hearing? It said, well, September regular yeah. meeting. Oh, it was a public hearing. Settlement yeah. on claims. So mm -hmm. On C3, this is our interlocal agreement between uh, the Board of County Commission and the school board for Comcast Channel 260. This is for us to have priority for our school board meetings to, to publish. Additionally, we'll be working with um, with them as well to determine how much additional airtime that we can get, and we will potentially look at marketing plans to, to, to roll and scroll information about our school district in order to continue to create uh, a positive excitement for what's going on within our, with our county. C4 is the, uh, the uniform statewide, or countywide and statewide assessment calendar. Uh, we will be updating a new calendar that's on there currently. I don't have, I have a C4. C4. It's not on here. Oh, C4. Uh, it goes if you refresh, because we did add it, um, it should be there. Okay. I will pass. Now we have a C4. Sorry. Okay. C4 is the uh, assessment calendar. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I'm passing this one document out that looks at our current assessments for um, uh, the state assessments kind of stay kind of consistent. If you look at uh, this document, we'll see in this comparison that I'm passing out, we'll see the district assessments that we had internally versus the proposed district assessments for 1819. And you'll see the comparison. You'll see that we have either stayed neutral or declined in, in particular areas. Uh, you will see that um, K2, uh, in, in particularly grades one and two, the SAT 10 was removed because out of all the students in K2, the SAT 10 was only used for around less than 100 students. So this is going to be, it's not going to be for the entire district. It's only going to be a small subset of our, of our learners for us to, uh, to address based on need to have a better understanding of where they are educationally. Uh, in addition, you'll see some uh, fluctuations of uh, 45 minute assessments that were removed and that was some of the mid-year optional uh, assessments that were basically uh, supplement materials. They could use the assessment they needed in order to continue uh, legwork in, in, in that supplement material. And then you see a big uh, decrease in, in ninth grade is that's because it was moved, biology was moved from ninth grade to 10th grade. And so that assessment was a wash as it related to 10th grade work. So I will be updating a new assessment calendar that's currently on uh, your agenda review right now. I will update the calendar that, that truly reflects this model. Okay, and if you have any questions, please reach out to us. C5. We're getting moved. Okay. C5 is the personnel consent agenda. This is where we have appointments and transitions and transfers, uh, appointments of SSOs, teachers, and support staff. This also has, uh, bring to your attention, uh, three job descriptions that I, that I want each of you to be aware of. The first one is for the school board attorney assistants. M Mr. Daggett, you want to speak to this one? 
Yeah, we, we just needed to make an adjustment in my view um, and having spoken with the administration on this for the assistant uh, to the school board attorney. What we did before is we modeled after other confidential uh, secretary seniors, I forget the, the term for it. Uh, but having been now a year into it, um, we were able to specify um, this very unique uh, situation that, uh, and, and position uh, that uh, Ms. Robinson uh, does so well. Um, so I felt that it was appropriate uh, to make that adjustment. Tell us what you're changing. I mean, she's not sure. a legal secretary, so yeah. what are you changing? Well, she is performing uh, really <laughs> as, as a legal secretary. In fact, she's doing uh, a bunch of work that uh, is similar to, to a paralegal. Um, she doesn't have any of the training as a paralegal. Right. So she, I'll tell you, has had uh, quite a bit of on-the-job training <laughs> as a matter of necessity uh, throughout this past year um, and has performed marvelously. Um, I felt that an adjustment w was necessary and in fact um, she was at a level throughout all of last year but I thought she was on, on a different step um, and this adjustment um, uh, corrects that uh, I, from last year. I'm going to ask what mm -hmm. are you changing her salary from level what to level what? So I think that it's a B31? From a B24 to a B31. And how much difference is that? 5000 and change. I, I remember when this came about, we were pretty specific on the secretary position, that it, you know, it wasn't a confidential or it wasn't a legal secretary. Oh, oh, it Although is. the information she yeah. sees is confidential, I understand that. Yeah. Um, so you're asking for an increase here. Well, Mr. Zagel, let me put in. Sure. What is her salary now, and what would this her salary be? Yeah. So I believe that her salary is 34 something. Correct. And that was why I say it is in part a correction because I intended to have her at 36,000 um, from the get-go and um, had committed a mistake in putting her on the wrong step. She started on the wrong step. I don't remember that being the amount, 36,000 when we first discussed it. No. 34, he said, and what would it be moved to, 39? I think it's 38. Roughly almost 39, 38. 38, 38 plus. plus. Because she has a step, too. She, she's entitled to a step as well. Is that correct, Mr. That's correct. Yeah. They are treated like other sporting So. So right now she's making 34 plus, and this would move her to 38 plus. Right. Okay. And, and the 36, just to re remind you, I had identified that as um, the amount that had been paid to the former full-time um, legal secretary slash paralegal uh, serving uh, the school board attorney's office. Who was actually a legal secretary who had the qualifications and was contracted with us. So we just paid salary and no benefits to that employee. That's I'm, why I'm, it was standard 3000 a month at 36000 and it was someone who actually is a legal secretary. I'm unaware as to any type of uh, special certification um, or education for legal secretary versus what it is uh, that, that Myrna does. Um, I'll tell you, if, if there were such certification, uh, we would pursue it. Okay. Can, can I just interject? Yeah. We shouldn't be discussing the name of the person in this position. Mm -hmm. What we're discussing is the job description and the allocation that matches the job description. So mm -hmm. regardless sure. of who is in that right. position, mm -hmm. that's what we need to keep the conversation right. centered on. So yeah. to and your point, Ms. Karakas, I don't think we need to discuss the qualifications. I didn't say anybody's name, Ms. Kilhausen. Mr. Daggett did. Yeah. I, I apologize. Pay attention and you'd hear okay. that. Well, wow. may I ask well, a question? The board, right. the board has wow. the information, so uh, I suggest we move on. This is not the proper time to be doing this. Can I ask a question yes. about this description? Yes. Okay. This revision more accurately coincides with similar positions and reflects the expanse of the duties and responsibilities necessary. And the comment, the one um, word that I feel like we should put bold in here, is confidential. And this particular person does a lot 
in a confidential nature more so than perhaps some other positions of this similar nature, I'm assuming. That's absolutely right. Okay. Uh, and uh, that, and we're talking that she would have had, this person, pardon me, would have had a step pretty much assigned to this position as well? Correct. With our recent changes, is right. that correct? She'll, she'll earn a step increase, correct. Okay. And I'm looking at the amount. And the first amount that you gave me, that 34, made my jaw drop. Mm -hmm. That we weren't paying her more. Or weren't paying this position more for the job that they do. Thank you. Okay. That's my question. Any further that one discussion can be on the board floor on September the 6th. May I ask a question on another position, or are you going to cover yeah, the other positions on this? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to cover okay, the next two. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, so the next one is um, for a program, a capital program accountant through uh, the Office of Assistant Superintendent of Operations. This is someone that will continue to look at the overall general capital funding revenue to track purchase orders, invoices, uh, direct services, to, to look at um, all the invoices from construction, to make sure they look at and track all funding uh, compared and, and aligned to the capital outlay funding, and also look at PICO as well. Uh, right now, uh, my understanding is that um, Dr. Kemp has one person to, to work through more than $40 million worth of work, and there's definitely need for assistance, Dr. Kemp. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, currently, we're looking at $40 million in revenue. As you guys are aware, the um, uh, operations budget over the past has been cut, 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 cut down. So we've not really had the benefit of having coordinators <coughs> or administrative positions overseeing financial accounting responsibilities. So uh, my goal today is just to create, bring a new job description to you for B32 at this time. I'm not asking uh, for an allocation. Uh, I'm asking for a new job description that allows us to find, um, allows us to have the work aligned with the kind of responsibility of $40 million worth of work. I have one, I've, I've typically had one lower level support person doing that work, but as we move forward and as we look at uh, potentially gaining additional revenue streams, I'd like to be able to re reallocate within my existing budget to make that position an opportunity uh, for the right candidate to come in or within. So I'm not asking for an additional allocation. I'm asking for approval of the job description. And if you take a look at the actual requirements of the job description, you'll see specifically what we're looking for. It is a specialized skill set to have knowledge of, uh, of, of, of Florida statutes and the ethos of PICO, of PICO special maintenance to work with uh, supporting those directors. Uh, we have one individual that, that pretty much uh, has been looking at that throughout the, the entire last 10 years as we've cut and cut to uh, very little in operation. So just asking for your support for the job description this time. Again, not asking for the allocation. I have a question though. Yes, Even though you're not asking for an allocation, usually we get a job description yeah. and at some point in the future we'll, you know, we we'll ask for an allocation. So I would like to know what is the uh, salary range for a B32? Two. What did you say? 32. Uh, that would range between seventeen dollars an hour. Uh, I would have to. I would have to calculate it by two hundred and sixty days. So it's going yeah. from a B twenty four to a B thirty. No, it's going from. That's correct. Yeah, the twenty four. It's going from a twenty four to a thirty two. Top level support. And so you're talking hourly difference. Couple uh, dollars or six seven dollars an hour. Six or seven dollars an hour. I, there. I can calculate it and send it out to the board. Okay, that would be good. Thank okay. you. Okay, next job description. I, you know, brought this for each of you to be a thinking partner with me mm -hmm. uh, as we move forward. So I had a meeting uh, last week. The young lady who runs the Educational Foundations of the State of Florida, along with um, uh, Mrs. Schofield. Mrs. Schofield has new roles, responsibility in her work, so she is no longer having the time and the energy. I mean, when she wants to be a part of it, she just doesn't have the time to drive the work as the leader of the Educational Foundation. So it pushes to, to our part where we have the ownership of identifying two things either A, creating a position, or trying to find someone internal to con uh, connect this continuity between the Educational Foundation and the school district in order to help with understanding our strategic plan to generate funding. I will tell you, I, will, I can send um, an analysis that shows like size school district generally raised between $500,000 and $700,000 for, um, uh, for funding to, to come into their Educational Foundation. 
uh, from our side, uh, and I'm very appreciative for what uh, Ms. Schofield and, and the staff has done. We raised around $135,000 as of last year, which is most of that turnkeys and goes to our schools for many grants and supports them in a number of initiatives. Um, in this part, this job description, we have two options. We could own it and we would we would pay for it. And my recommendation would be to potentially add an allocation to drive this work for one calendar year. And then once they become self-sustained and self-sufficient, then, then, uh, then that person would be paid through the educational foundation, which many of the educational foundations do. Um, or you can, you can potentially hire someone that's not full-time staff and do someone that potentially is part-time. Um, the only reason I bring this to you today is because we've got to do something because Ms. Schofield is ready to tip her hat. And we've got to, and we, we can do and I can do better as superintendent leveraging the, um, the community partnership that relates to the educational foundation. What, what level of salary are you thinking about for this position? Um, I, the, so in every county, it's a director position or, or higher. In this position, I took it to the lowest director in Clay County, which is a director three. I think the director three may run and start at 50, 66. Uh, for director three? 66? For director three. I thought that was the lowest one. That okay. is the lowest what is one. It? it starts at 66. 66. So what's the high? No, no it was 50. The high of, for director three is 93. And, and when so I, 93? 93. And when I send this to you, you see the analysis. It's, it's usually paid between seventy and hundred thousand dollars which becomes self-sufficient once this person has a role in calendar year and they start generating the funding. They so would be paying for their own salary. They would when be. looking at others, other districts, some of the districts that are even smaller than us are in millions of dollars that come into their foundation, which is amazing to me. And they have a lot of, a lot of support. The foundation is gaining more support in the community through businesses. And not only is Kathy planning on stepping down, but the president is also planning on stepping down. They've been doing this for, I don't know, four years. Have we ever paid six, six years at the Education Foundation? No. Right? Been, there's never been enough money to pay. It's always think. been a PR person it's been, yeah. that did that. In and a volunteer. To. Yeah, it, and I can tell you that <laughs> Nicole you know, Schneider that. can't do this work. She mm -hmm. just doesn't have the time. Mm -hmm. um, this is, uh, you know, in mm -hmm. July. You need, and, and truly, to do it right in a foundation situation, you need someone committed to actually get out and get the money, as as much money as you can, and make those business contacts. And also, do they have any money right now? Yeah. Oh, they get they. Like, I mean, that they couldn't pay the no, first no, year no, salary no. until this okay. person. Okay. Last year, just to give you an example, the last budget that I saw, we had fifty some thousand dollars in the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, and that's going to build over this year. A lot of that is earmarked for specific funds. So for instance, if Amazon gives us money and they say, okay, we're going to give you this money, but this is going to be earmarked for this particular um, event or activity or whatever, we can't touch that then to give out the teacher grants. This last year, I say we because I'm the sure, foundation sure. rep, but this last year we picked up the, the teacher of the year thing and you think, oh, that's not $10,000. Ten thousand dollars. So what you're saying is there's no money there's no for the money. There's not enough to pay their so director. Why did the foundation pay? Because normally, like community first or by Star, somebody covers that. Oh, we get we get right. donations. Yeah. donations right. Statutes right. clear it can't come from district. Right. Some of the money had to. I mean, you're talking to run the thresher horn. Yeah. We've already got dates set up for that. I believe for this year's teacher of the year, and it's. I mean, just to get it for seven, five thousand, something like that. So just it's expensive. So, so, so I just bring. Go ahead, sorry. I just keep in mind that we're more of a bedroom community, and having sat on the foundation also, as Mrs. Mm -hmm. Studdard has, mm -hmm. it, it is a challenge yeah, to yeah. to raise money, mm -hmm. and, and you know we don't have the waterfront property like our neighbors St. John's do. So it, there's different dynamics to us, and I just worry that. We're going to be raising money and paying a salary and not doing many grants. But it's no, and it's also, I, I don't mean to cut you off in that way, but it's also being, what's the word I'm looking for? Getting the initiative together, even though we are the bedroom community. Look at, for, look at for Nassau County. They have a couple of million dollars coming in because they make everything a money making event. The Teacher of the Year thing is a, their biggest money making event. 
But it's they, a gala. They have it's a, a huge thing that the end sponsorship. businesses sponsorships. They'll mm -hmm. they'll sponsor a table, and that table sponsors one of the teachers of the year. Now, granted, it's a smaller county, so they don't have as many sure. teachers, and they have facilities like Amelia Island and places like that where they yeah. can have this, right? And I'm sitting there in the foundation meeting or at, at a group meeting that we had, and I said, "Well, we've got <laughs> the fairgrounds." And immediately, the ideas that they were throwing at me, well, have a rodeo theme, or have a, have a country theme, or have a this theme, or have this thing. This can be your money making. This can, and I'm sitting there going, you get it? And that's what a director of a foundation should be doing. Having that think tank, let's get this all together. How can we, yes, support that thing to me. I mean, we can't make any money. We got a lot of big bucks in this county. Let's do this, or let's do that, or reach out and pull it in from other places. It's That's also okay. a different skill set. It's someone with experience with a yes. foundation that yes. can go out and find endowments because that's where your big money is coming mm -hmm. from. So when, when people pass away and they leave to their estate, they leave their estate to a foundation that's instead of the state or whomever, if they don't have family or whatever they're going to do, a lot of people will set up endowments. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are people who would want to endow Clay County Schools for these kinds of things that and that it makes me think of a real opportunity the director of tourism for the BCC they committed to a director of tourism a couple of like two years ago whatever and they're on this role now of making Clay County a destination you know and when, what are you going to come to Clay County for well let's build that and let's create that and you have to start somewhere but you have to make that first initial commitment I saw this and that's, I was like, are we going to talk about it? Yes, Because this, wow. So I will it's, send It's the, an idea. It's not a Yes, yeah. ma'am. I'm just putting on the air because we've got to move in a direction. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, for, for me, I'll take your lead. I will send you a comparison of surrounding and like sized counties that are really generating a lot of money and how they, um, what the salaries are, which are going to range between seven and hundred thousand dollars and um, how, um, who pays for it, which is most of them is the foundation that pays for it. That would be great. Thank and you, Mr. Davis. And a one-year thing, yes, one-year contract, and if they're not making Oh, money, yeah, I think we yeah, set targets. That's, that is also, I mean, it's, it's you know, targets. it's not losing money. We're not. Yes, ma'am. So after the first year, are you, Mr. Davis, are you thinking that then the foundation can absorb the, the salary? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it would just be a one-year commitment from the board. Yes, ma'am. And then the board could revisit it because you know determine whether or not mm -hmm. it was overall effective. Um, you know what kind of uh, funding and what impact do they have to the school district overall, and then did it align to our strategic plan targets? All right, Mr. Superintendent. Yes, sir. Before you go on, the B thirty two is fifteen seventy an hour. Fifteen seventy an hour. The B twenty four is twelve eighty five. So on step one, the difference is a little less than three bucks per hour. In addition, I call the board's attention to inside the personnel consent agenda, there's one page that has numbers, employee numbers instead of names. That's due to the confidentiality of those of those employees being appointed by the board, but their identity being protected. It was cryptic, but I think you all know what I'm talking about. I have another question on the personal consent agenda. I don't recall seeing this many conclude employment rescinded. Those were being individuals that, uh, due to certification or other requirements, were uh, conclude employment for the board in June okay. by statute okay. that were later rehired. So I'm proud to say that virtually everybody that was here last year is back again with very very few exceptions okay so that's a paperwork thing i just yes. don't recall seeing that in the past to yes. this extent yes so, okay do we have a an obligation between so it looks like they're teachers yes so are we going back and paying them or did they they finish their 10 month they, yeah. they well, finish it. My one of them they're, is a, one of them says eleven months. So right, was she paid her eleven month yes. checks and then and on on six seven? Right. So so their contract will be concluded at the end of June. This is the start of the fiscal year is July. 
by statute, if you don't have your requirements, they were brought to that board meeting as conclude. Okay. They were subsequently rehired back into the district okay. right after that. So they lost no salary? Correct. Okay. They lost no salary. And proud to say that very, very few people were not brought back. And, and um, I don't want to shoot human resources more, but we did a really good job of bringing people back. I know you guys were focused on that. And that's I'm important. Proud, we I'm appreciate proud to say that. that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That is certain. important to us. All right, C6 is the best and brightest Florida statute review. This is where we're bringing back the annual uh, um, information as relates to the best and the brightest. This uh, new language for the best <coughs> and the brightest this year allows an individual, a teacher who was a, an individual who was a teacher last year, who, who is no longer a teacher this year, they may be a specialist, a coach, they may be working um, maybe in a potential administration, they now qualify for the money. So, uh, you know, this, this is, is so crazy. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, we're just trying to update our language to match the states, the statute. So we have one year of five people, and I won't go into it because I know it's a suit, that it didn't qualify for, and now this, they've changed it. Right. And that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We spent so more legal fees. Like we still have. This is crazy. crazy. Well, this isn't part of the agenda, but I've got a question to ask about that after the meeting. I don't want to get it all. <laughs> yes, ma'am. There, uh, this is how it should have been all along. I want to know, do we still have a pending lawsuit on this? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Uh, I, I, so what? Okay. So it, uh, I'd like to talk to Mr. Dagger about sure. this later. Sure. So this is us just uh, updating the language that, the, that, that, um, that Florida statute has been updated as well. As you know, the effective teachers get 800, highly effective 1,200, and there's potential for $6,000 scholarship if you have a particular ACT SAT score. <coughs> C7, this is us uh, approving advertisement for notice of intent to adopt proposed amendments to school board policy 2.36 with firearms and chemical weapons. What this language does is updates and brings uh, a number of classifications that identified to be able to, to uh, possess and carry firearms. This is with local law enforcement, with school uh, resource officers, school safety officers, and we also add in guardians as well. Bring forward directly the same, but we wanted to add all of the language. C8 is a complete salary schedule for 18 and 19. This is, um, uh, I've made some phone calls. This will touch every employee in the school district. Here, historically, we, we brought teachers and support staff. With this, uh, with this new um, uh, agenda item, we are proposed to bring administration as well. Administration has not received a raise since uh, 2009. Um, this raise, we use the same matrix that teachers will be uh, evaluated on with a 1.34 and the 1.0 as relates to highly effective and effective. Uh, as it relates to the funding, we budgeted this money going into our uh, created budget that was presented to the board initially. And the budget amount for the administrators was what? Four hundred seventy thousand. It's around four hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. Oh, I think four hundred twenty-eight. Talking about, go tell me, four seventy. Four twenty-eight. Four twenty-eight. Four twenty-eight. Oh, it's four twenty-eight. So if you're highly effective. You know, you receive two hundred and thirty dollars a year the last ten years. Mm -hmm. Is this starting in this current school year, or are we going back to no. the last school year? Current school year. And they'll be evaluated at the end of the school year. Yeah. That's based on based on previous last previous years evaluation. Previous years evaluation, and then it will roll. But we had money set aside. We did. Mm -hmm. Right, C9 is CTE out of state overnight field trips. This is where CTE brings a, a number of recognized field trips and learning experiences for the curriculum and instructional programs. So they have a number of dates through whether it's a FBLA, FFA, looking at Skills USA. So they have a number of items that uh, are venues and times that are identified. So just in case they recognize and, and they, they uh, obtain this, either their certification or aspire to go or they qualify, they will go to some of these events. We will always bring them individually, but we just want to bring them <coughs> in that aggregate. Oh, that's right, so we can see all of them. Yeah, it's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. We see a lot of kids. Yes. It's great that she some sends them, it also. Some of them qualify. She does, good job. she does a good job with CTE. We uh, always yeah. get those yeah. in the Real hands. close. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Department. Yeah. 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 And we've, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I remember approving sure. field trips three weeks after it happened. Right. Yeah. This, this will help is, with that. This is an opportunity to say, okay, we realize these are coming up, and right. let's hope we send all sorts of kids. That's right. We'll <laughs> <of these. laughs> oh, try our yeah. best. Yeah, the first day part was years ago. They would go out of out of state. Uh, you know, we would see it on the number of chaperones and so forth and so on, and we would get it, you know, two months after the, they had gone. Yeah. And we used to have an attorney many, many years ago that would just have fits about the OVA, especially going out of state. He was very particular about that. So I'm glad to see this. When the high schools is going to the, which ball, which parade? I can't remember, remember the name of the one. Um, but I thought, ooh, if they need chaperones, they need chaperones. I start, I was going to say, I really can't tell them that they need a school board for our members to chaperone. They went to Nashville. They went to England. Yeah, I said, you know, the school board really should, yeah, we should have chaperones. The hospitality one they're actually doing a cruise. Fine. I've never been on a cruise. That would be a good one for me. Sorry. 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 With unmanned aircraft for the training and materials, and this is directly linked to Oak Leaf um, Aerospace Academy. C11 is our school affiliation agreement between um, Clay County District Schools and the Orange Park Medical Center. This is the agreement for the medical program, health services program, for the training, clinical hours. We also use their name in the health science uh, in order to seek forward with industry certifications and some, some um, opportunities for internships as well. C12, uh, this is uh, bringing, we're going to bring Vice Star to Clay High School. Yeah. So, uh, there, you know, uh, during Leadership Florida, Mr. Swift was with us, and uh, we were looking for somewhere to go, and he had somewhere to go, and I kept on him, on him, on him, and the staff did as, CTE staff did as well. So, we're bringing it to Clay High, which is exciting. That's wow. That's very That's good. That's four schools now. Yes, ma'am. We're going to keep rolling. Very good. C-13 is approved for out-of-county tra student travel, K-12 academics. Do you see that we have band, FFA, uh, NJRTC, wrestling, so many different places Everybody's that our students are going. Yeah. This is awesome. Great. And these are all good work. C-14, this is our dual uh, enrollment annual agree articulation agreement with St. John's River. This is where our agreement to provide dual enrollment services for in classes and courses for high school programs to, to service our students. Which they do a great job for us. We have a number of kids that are actively engaged and our dual enrollment numbers continue to climb. C15 is um, our accelerated pathway agreement, once again, for Collegiate High School with our agreement between St. John's River State College as well. This is currently at Orange Park High School and Middleburg High School. We, this is our, uh, I believe, our third year at Orange Park High School and second year at Middleburg, at a, and we have probably a total of around 250 students that are taking this pathway. So it's continued to be an attractive platform for our students and newcomers to both of these schools. Are, are we good with our um, dual enrollment? Our, I guess it would be dual enrollment in Keystone Heights. Yes, ma'am. Santa Fe. Yes, so we're, yes, that's all up to date. They do the best yes, job. Yes, ma'am. They have the largest ever. number ever. Ever. 200. Right. Ever. 200 students. Yeah. Largest ever. That's, 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 that's amazing. That's amazing. amazing. I mean, we have now have, in the last two years, have put in acceleration opportunities in every one of our high schools. Mm -hmm. So, and they all do good work, and kids continue to want to, to push forward uh, intellectually, and, and, and we are continue to open the doors for them. So, many thanks to Santa Fe and St. John's River, mm -hmm. and for you for allowing us to do so. C-16 is the articula, this is the agreement between the school board and the county for, for our school board and AMI students. This is our annual agreement for our male students for up to 44 students. Currently, they fluctuate between 29 and 32 students. We will continue to provide services at Clay High School. C-17 is pass-through funding for Clay Charter Academy, which is a request for Title IIA funds uh, for, um, you know, I think it's uh, Kagan, Kagan strategies, strategies, field strategies, which is solid, solid professional development. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Oh, you're, you're okay. okay. C18 is um, is our movement to continue to build the capacity of our educational leaders within our school district. 
This is where we will continue to partner with the New Teacher Project for Leadership Development. Historically, I mean, last year was the first time we partnered with them for assistance with building capacity of leaders. We focused on the area of literacy. We did have some wins uh, through that. We, we focused on shifts. We, we focused on better understanding how to maximize moments of learning. We focused on better understanding item specs, better understanding uh, um, standards and aligning that to actual lessons for students. So this year our focus will be on science and mathematics. We saw some areas of math that we needed really to focus on and uh, science did a great job last year so we don't want to lose um, the, uh, the momentum that we currently have. And this will all be funded through the, fa uh, through the faculty leadership development grant which is pioneered for leadership development as well. C19 is our master in service plan. This is an annual bring. This identified components of our professional development plan along with how teachers receive master in service points for certification. As of right now, there's, there hasn't been, there's not significant changes within this document. Just some, uh, you know, just a couple areas that we were just updating. Go ahead. Has this been run through the union? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. I that sent that. the document and track changes to Renly last week, so she could see the changes. Wrote her that most of them are minor, were like dates okay, and changes. things like that. Okay. We have been trying to work to get a PDAC meeting scheduled. Good. Um, and as soon as we have one, we'll bring it to them as well. That's right. We'll try to hopefully get it done next couple of days. Are they highlighted in here the for us so we know yes, what changes work? We can get, I can give, provide you with a copy of track, track changes. changes. And that's what we need to say. I think there's track change here. Most of it was just deleted stuff. I don't think it's I think on the really back of the oh, It's essentially the same document the same with document. dates changed. Dates changes. Okay. Yes, if you would, just, I think it's on here because I have it. We will. We will. We have the corrected version on the backup. Okay. We'll add that too. You have the track change version? I do, but I don't. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Okay. We'll get it to you today. Absolutely. Thank you. See, she's going to be looking at it today. <laughs> hey, you, you can wait till Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be looking at it. I don't think we'll be looking at it today or tomorrow. Carol might. <laughs> no. It's very simple. You will see very much well on the minor stuff. C20 is the Walden University <laughs> Interagency Agreement. This is where we agreed for them to send interns to our school district to, for teacher interns. And uh, potentially when they send them, we recruit them, train them, hopefully hire them. How Ooh. many do you think they'll send? Oh, right now, this is for one. This, this is one. one. Yeah. <laughs> they have one. It's a start. Yeah, yeah they have it's one. A start. UNF does a good job for us, but we're open to bringing Ooh, anyone we can you. to the teaching field. C21 is proposed allocation changes. Um, in this document, you'll see a lot of moving around from the general funds perspective the, with uh, deleting from uh, one school, you know, especially with the, the gifted, is deleting from certain schools and then putting the gifted uh, teachers at the district level so we can determine the actual need and services within, within uh, based on students. Uh, some of the schools didn't, didn't need the, uh, didn't have the number of students for qualifications, so now it'll come back to the district level and then we will really work to identify um, which schools actually need uh, the growing needs for gifted, so that's a financial wash. If you look at this, um, uh, Ridgeview High School uh, is looking at uh, changing to wash from a student record secretary to making certain we have the, length of the correct title from a school secretary at 12 months. So we're doing a title change there. Uh, we did add a, a point two to Lake Asbury Elementary got the guidance counselor to make it a full. Um, you will see on here that we had to add transportation bus drivers and ESC aides and bus monitors uh, because of the needs for, for our students. Um, that was going to be a plus around $84,000, $82,000 add in this document. Uh, there's a wash for the building, uh, well there's a, a deletion of the building automation system coordinator 4 and moving it to a coordinator 2 that we spoke about for the last, couple, uh, last month. Let me ask you yes, this, what do they do? Uh, this is all about the controls. Or this is the controls of the HVAC uh, systems, monitor electronics. Right. Go ahead. Building automation, everything from uh, your lighting to your bell schedules to the HVAC temperatures, uh, turning them on, turning them off, random weekends, special events, all that is included in this. The software associated with all those systems are all under this hat now. And go ahead. So it'd be going through 61 to 75. Okay. And this person this is, is covering all of the schools? Yes, he controls all the schools. He doesn't have a life right now because he, 
tax him on the weekends and, okay. you know, and I help out as much as I can. Right. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, he's uh, well, one pretty busy. Person. One person doing it. We're, we're trying to create a business automation specialist uh, work center within the maintenance department. Like growing a couple of, you'll see those bills in there too that are all wash. No, we can't no. This, 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 to do this and to manage you know, this type of electronics within mm -hmm. this kind of organization, this is still not competitive. Yeah, none right. of this board yeah. would be yeah. a competitive I, I BAS for do what that. he does so now is somewhere between seventy and a hundred thousand. Yeah, and, and, and just and for five make years sure our custodians are comfortable when they're cleaning. Right. Yes, so ma'am. He's Please. the worst person to get called. Take care. He's the worst. <laughs> well, I mean, the custodians <laughs> up to this point had been responsible for so much of that in the, each of right. the individual schools because right. they would learn all of the electronics of whatever behind right. someone from your area. And when that fire alarm, when we'd have a fire drill or something, and that fire alarm it just wouldn't go off quite right. Right. In so that one section of that one building, it was. You but know, the fire alarm is not covered in this. Fire alarm is a separate animal unto itself. It, it, does, it, it has a different path. So the first responders for those are the, the principals of the school. Mm -hmm. And then our guy would get called down an emergency under the electronic shop to repair that system. Okay. That is a separate system. That's not really automated. It's just one of those systems that are, doesn't have a brain. It just turns on and turns <laughs> off. It's off. And when it, it goes off, off, you pay attention to it. Real annoying. That's interesting. <laughs> one, Thank one, you. One more point study regarding this is that over time we've had so many different types of controls for HVAC and they have different systems and there's a learning curve involved I mean every quarter there's a learning curve involved with proficiency requirements for uh, managing these controls so just from a procurement perspective I mean over time we have I mean, we got Johnson controls don't try we have this and it takes a specialized skill set now to be able to master that my goal would be hopefully that we could standardize controls at some point mm -hmm. so that all of our schools so have the same, same, same. same. Uh, system so we can better prepare control. those that are working on it and those that are required to train for them uh, to be able to control it instead of having to learn four different systems we have uh, to focus on one and be more efficient. Oh yeah, they're very old. I mean, when you think of WE Cherry Trying versus Dole, right. it's right, matter of fact, that's, that's a perfect, <laughs> that's a perfect <laughs> comment. <laughs> Because oh, IS, yeah. uh, from an IS perspective, yeah. from the information, you know, we have we have some systems that are so old that you know That's we get they get yeah, we get yeah, right. and his team regarding the firewall restrictions right. and things right. that we have right. to do to, to make those systems work. So we've got to have someone that knows over right. right. which is a challenge. Okay, yeah. and, and then the, that helps. And then we'll, mm -hmm. then the. We'll, and then a special assistance there, a special assistant to help with that uh, process. And then the last one would be an insurance assistant. Uh, this is um, through the department of Mrs. Gann. Uh, you know, we recognize her looking. She is doing a significant amount of work. And we do agree with, uh, with her providing some of the assistance to that initiative for her. Can I ask a question about sure. the warehouse foreman? Yes, ma'am. Do we have a warehouse anymore? No. So those two positions are going so so the, 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 the straight on warehouse, let me, clear, let me clarify you. So there was two warehouses at one time. There was the warehouse where we had all the paper and we had all the right. supplies for the instructional world. Yes. And then there was the maintenance warehouse. Right. The maintenance warehouse absorbed them all last year, the entire warehouse. So we did away with the instructional warehouse right. and the courier service and the incidental warehousing came over to the maintenance side of the house. So we are doing that. So we have five people assigned. Of those five people, we have one B32 and one B21, and then the rest are, I think, A19, simple warehousers. Mm -hmm. So there's five people. So the warehouser job, we did away with that one because that was in the old warehouse. Right. And then we, we are changing that to a B31 to BAS so we can employ, try and attach that yeah, to uh, somebody or catch somebody out there that has BAS capabilities to help with the uh, Stuff that works out. And to have success in management through this process. So, if the, one of these individuals left, if someone understands how to understand to work all the controls in this organization. So, we can't have the air on the lights on, those kind of things. So we've created a monster of BAS. Yeah. So it's, it's, it is, and, it is huge. And, and the biggest thing in the, in the instructional side, so please know that we just didn't punt it. Uh, you know, we did it intentionally because we were, the product was being sent to us, then we were touch, we were touching it, sending it, driving gas, touching I mean, we were just well, touching it too was, much. That was on its way out. We, even we, we were wasting a lot of money and time on the employees, so. 
but and and getting rid of that and allowing the schools to, to, then to, to own the take the it process. over yes. probably save money in the long run. Yeah, maybe we can gas, find the right. I mean, personnel hours. Yeah, my only prices. concern with that is I'm hearing more and more of principals telling teachers they have to provide their own power strips for um, charging stations for the Chromebooks that they have to provide their own that so works, by saving yeah. their own so, money yeah. and that and I look at those as required so, that oh, I agree. That? so yeah. I can tell you I can answer that I haven't heard I haven't heard I'll look into it um, but no we provide anything that's part of their role and responsibility we will provide a teacher should not have to buy a power strip for anything yeah. well, we should have accessibility they just said that's not true that's a that's a hard well, no, I'll, I'll look into it. It, it yeah. might it might be happening at the school level. It's not coming back Later, this year. In the district. Yeah. yeah, no, this and was not this was not said that it was happening at the oh. district level. It was a, oh. it was schools. That's how principals are con, are yeah. having more money to spend within yeah, their schools. So through the chair, the principal should never ask a teacher to spend. On, on, on equipment or supplies that's no. not related or we should own all of that. So we'll why, make sure why don't you tell and Mr. Davis after the meeting depend, And it depends sharp. on the equipment as well. I mean, speaking from personal experience, yes, I had a small refrigerator in my classroom and yes, I had a few personal items yeah, that probably that. took power. You don't know that, by the way. Did you have a fan also? Did you have a fan? Did you have a fan? Uh, and then the heater. Fortunately, <laughs> I, I had a good relationship with her. Love it. He and I saw eye to eye. But man, I, I can see where yeah. where and and I'm not saying that <laughs> teachers would say, oh, but yeah. no, that even then, okay. We can get power and before we leave this, I wanted sure. to ask about the. Well, I'm sorry. I'll you go know. back. <laughs> you were getting too fast for me, Miss Bush. <laughs> I think this is a Mr. McCauley question. I wanted you to tell me about the Medicaid data assistant. Ooh. What's Medicaid data assistant? That is a position that we are looking to create for, to be paid out of Medicaid to help facilitate all of our Medicaid flow from Seminole back to us, from our um, submission for reimbursements, etc. Would One they of be the doing what the nurses? Uh, yes, ma'am. Essentially, that? yes, ma'am. Just monitoring that filing from our SLPs, our nurses, our our uh, health assist, behavior health assistants, any of the people that we can bill for their support, we put through our Medicaid. One thing that that I've learned since coming to Clay is that um, from the people in Tallahassee and Washington, is Clay County has always done a really nice job of maximizing our Medicaid billing. So we're lucky in that we're able to keep that flow going, and this was just an opportunity to strengthen that so that we don't miss any dollars. And do we have a job description on that? Yes. There is a job. It was, it was approved by the board. For it was. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, isn't that why most of our nurses are RNs because the RNs can sign off on that, whereas the LPNs? Yeah, I wish off. I, I wish I could say most of our nurses. Were our RNs, but we don't um, have but we how many of our that. nurses are now RNs? Not many, huh? Um, to, in the true sense of the word, Ms. Karkas is correct um, that most of our nurses are in, but we do struggle to keep RNs <laughs> just because and of the salary. The and I will I'll say this openly, I'm sorry, that we have to figure out how to, to focus on being competitive with that right. level of position because yeah. right now I had, uh, you know, uh, I met with an individual last week and we're not competitive at all. We, yeah. we're, we're not. I mean, we have a handful of positions currently, and yeah. we've got to have RNs in these schools. Same speech, been an ongoing too, right? problem. Uh, no, so. speech pathology is the same because we pay PTs and OTs on that different. Yeah. Yeah. different I would schedule, absolutely which is SLPs higher. are in that same yeah. boat that, yeah. that they are. Same boat. Master say, level, well trained right. therapist, and we pay them as speech, yeah. nursing, and HVAC are probably some of the three that create major heart right. heart, yeah. heart yeah. And yeah. nurses and we, right we now. We have enriched it two years ago. Mm -hmm. But we're not on the same level as the private sector at all. Oh, no. yeah, I do know close. I've gotten phone calls that yeah. um, nurses had applied, accepted the job, and then day one said, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. So how well, many? We actually did have one <laughs> just last week. How many schools really? don't have or miss, or miss um, their last right now? I, 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 I was going to say five, five or six we currently it's are. It's good. That was yeah. down from nine. Sure. I know it was, it was, 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 was Well. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I would ask, and I'm thinking, I'm hearing this uh, consensus from the board, that we, as we can, try to do something to alleviate this nursing shortage situation. Yes, ma'am. And I think, and I'm speaking in reference to salary, Bargain. because yeah. when we have people come and work one day and I leave. I mean, yeah. No, I don't disagree with you. And, and this is not something that was just this year, last no. year. Oh, no. This has been this ongoing, ongoing, where so. nurses have come and literally begged us. So. Yes, they have. I think it should be addressed. Uh, okay. One of the concerns that I've heard from nurses is um, many of your RNs are bachelor degree nurses, and so um, paying them on the support side of things as opposed right. to the professional side um, mm -hmm. is a part of the hang up. And then a lot of your nurses who would be interested in a school nurse position are experienced nurses, and when you limit the amount of years that they can bring with them, that hurts their pay as yes, well. They can only bring 10 years right now. They, they can only bring so, 10. And yeah. then in addition to that, it's not just the school district that's experiencing the nursing shortage. That every hospital is that. as well. Really? I yeah. get mail regularly. Right. I mean, <laughs> yes. Orange Park Medical Center recently sent a piece of mail out to registered nurses I'm trying to recruit, and they're offering a fifteen thousand dollars sign-on wow. bonus. Which means that this year we've got to do better. Wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. Yeah. Well, so there's well, a nursing shortage, just as yeah. there's a teacher shortage. Yes. So okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we mm -hmm. had a little discussion about this. Yeah. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. C twenty two is non-sufficient uh, uh, check write-off. Permission to write it off. It's forty-five dollars. <laughs> Good job, Dr. Lagunko. That's all number. <laughs> is that one uh, person? Yeah. Have, have you I know you are. <laughs> have you yep. clarified to the board how you're so, handling so, that? So originally we were going to transition to oh, just say, you know what, no more checks. But we, uh, let, we kind of backtracked and said, you know what, we'll have an option for online. You can pay for uh, you know programs. Uh, you can pay for you know anything through our school district online, but you do have the option of writing a check as well. However, if you abuse the in you know the option of writing a check and you write an insufficient fund check, then we may push you ultimately to making you go online. Yeah, and the reason that they're yeah. not right. going to do make everybody go online is we found that it's it's a it cost them three dollars every time. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's right. I. Yeah, that's. But if they ever write a bad check, then they can go online. I heard from parents that said I didn't have any cash. It was mm -hmm. the last day to buy lockers, and it's a three dollar. So mm -hmm. it's a three dollar locker, and we're gonna yeah, pay a three dollar fee well, for them to pay online for. Yeah. Well, that's not the case now. So yeah. it's always yeah. been cash. But I know yeah. like, if you don't cash yeah. or check with you, yeah, yeah. yeah. we're gonna have give parents a chance. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So now we have we have both options, and they can choose which one they desire, and hopefully they're not on this list. <laughs> but you're to be commended for trying to get rid of it. Nothing more frustrating <laughs> to see this list of bad yeah. checks. Who was the guy who used to come to the board meetings and read their names? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they actually came to the board yeah, meeting and read the names of people and who he'd read out their names. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. More than <laughs> once that happened. I don't want to be that guy on the list. Yeah. 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 That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> C23 is budget amendment for months of November 17, December 17, January 18, February 18, a bunch of months. Yeah. But, um, Doc, this wanna... is pretty much catching up on uh, our budget amendments. <laughs> I am yeah, hoping by the board meeting I'm exercising the 48-hour uh, <laughs> upload um, that we will have those uh, reports ready. Um, as you know, we are going still going through the conversion and it has been a task just trying to pull reports, the appropriate reports, accurate reports to present to the board. So it is my last attempt to bring all our amendments and all our financials to the board before the end of to meet the criteria for end of year closing for 1718. Do you anticipate more audit issues this year with that conversion? I am going to say I pray no. <laughs> uh, however, because of the conversion, there might be some additional audit criticisms, corrections that we will have to make because we're just we're, we're in the process of testing the system and we're finding things as we're going through it. It's trial and error at this point. So yes, I I feel like we may. If we don't, then we've done an excellent job in our conversion on the GL side now. 
GL side, we're still on payroll and HR. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and to the chair, conversions is a good point because they are very, they're difficult to do. So there's a potential of errors that we, you know, that we will find, but we can only get better with a new system once it's, once it's finalized and transitioned over. C24 Superintendent's Annual Financial Report for um, for 2018. Same mentality. We'll, once we get the information, we'll upload it as well. C25 is deletion of certain items uh, report within this organization. So I want a 1982 van. It doesn't have floorboards on here. It doesn't have floorboards. It was transporting snow. students last year. <laughs> 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 I'm not laughing at I don't know. Move it on up. Wasn't it the golf one at it's the law of diminishing returns. <laughs> <laughs> so my lots kid, of, my kid well, those golf, club, it. Yeah, those golf so clubs are heavy. Lots of stuff yeah. on here that we're trying to sunset. So. It was donated. Somebody will buy it. Oh, so my Robert will sell it. Someone, if Robert will sell it, someone will find the treasure. <laughs> okay, C26 <laughs> is um, restatement our local agreement with emergency shelters uh, for, for Clay County along with our um, agreement with the BCC. Same schools, um, basically? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is uh, pretty much is all about uh, you know how we had to add some information about reimburse the how the BCC would now reimburse us for utilities, mm -hmm. uh, and then we had to add some key personnel uh, to our staffs and to our shelters this year, which would be um, somewhat of a nurses will place at our shelters. We'll make certain we have maintenance on staff and also um, informational services IS as well. Yeah, we have to provide the nurses. Yeah. So last, we'll year they, last year they. Can so we, we work with our oh, department really? center to get the oh, wow. nurses. <laughs> so it. Yeah, yes, like ma'am. We, we, yes, ma we will work with. We have to provide the nurses. If you internally are not ready and prepared, that's, that's, the that's the medical shelter. One. That's the medical shelter. Right. right. The Department of Health. Okay. Just making sure I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. We get reimbursed for all of our expenses. And this just strengthens that for us. We have a great partnership with them. Right. BCC and the emergency uh, EOC over there with Mr. Ward. So, Harvard and Ward work well together. He is awesome. Totally. And hopefully, we won't need these this year. I yeah. hope. Oh. Fingers crossed. We're getting to that window, so let's hope it goes fast. C27s is the, is the, uh, the monthly pre qualification for contractors. C28 is the county wide mechanical oh electronical engineer I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. So I'm it's waiting. a one year renewal. I'm waiting. For three, I'm not even going to speak to it. Uh, three consecutive. Uh, it was, uh, Go right to it right now. Yeah, but we're still on 28. So the mechanical right. electrical engineer contract. So this was uh, publicized, and we're going to go with three individuals for recommendations for work for firms: Haddad, uh, Schaefer, and TLC for engineer. Mr. Connell, did you have something to add? No. Yeah, we're waiting. Yeah, sorry. We're waiting. What's the next one? C29 is change order for Middleburg Elementary restroom renovation. This is an increase, but once once you get into the renovations, you see there's uh, more work to be done. So this is a new uh, hot water heater, new piping, new rust track replacement. So eleven thousand dollars going to that to make sure we're good. Be code. <laughs> C30 is the substantial completion of Orange Park Elementary Kitchen Renovation. C31 is the substantial completion of Millburg Elementary School Restroom Renovation. Mr. Connell, Mr. Uh, Kim, uh, uh, you want to say this? Chair? I, I, you're so excited, Ms. Stoddard. I hate to disappoint you. Mr. Connell's going to tell you exactly what's happening. You are trying, you are trying, you are trying to talk before we have a I chance to come. Just, you promised <laughs> in the word of honor that we would never, ever see this again. I'm not speaking. This might be good news, though. Hey. Number thirty lashes. <laughs> Sorry, the the through the chair. I said it wasn't coming back, and it, and it just continues to come back. So now I'm, this is just going to be a monthly deal that we put on. Board. Regardless if we need it or not, it's just coming. So I brought in the legend. I brought in the legend to make sure he can explain to you what happened. You're, just, have one of those. you're just afraid to explain it. So I'm not, no, no. You think we'll be nice for you? We may have someone next month. So let me get this straight. Dr. Kemp is putting it out on board Jim. Board Jim. Somebody's next month. Somebody else. I own it all. I could dump it on Phil because it's actually his problem. Yeah, he's next month. Oh, oh, oh. Sure he's next month. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll right. I, next I brought a picture again. this time because I want I want to emphasize this is tacked onto that project because we're working there and it was the most expedient and economical way to do it. 
We have not had an increase in the cost of this building. This is the drainage that was failing on the school uh, site. Um, so if you look at that picture, the, the building, and if you, I've got pretty much the same one here, depending on which way you're looking at it. The new building's going here. We had to relocate one of the drainage structures. Now this structure that I'm pointing at, uh, what's numbered on yours, um, S32, that's a 48 inch pipe, 16 feet below the surface of the ground. And when we got down to it, we, we knew it was failing because it was caving in around it before the building started. So we had to go dig down that deep and replace that hunk of pipe, all these drains, that hunk of pipe, move it out into the road. When we dug that pipe up, we realized this pipe going that way was compromised also and crushed, so that pipe had to come out. Same thing, when we went this way, we got to this structure that has three other pipes coming out of it. This one will need to be replaced, but I can't justify that attached to the scope you of the project. You do that dare. We need to, <laughs> yes. This one needed to be replaced, and we replaced as much of it as we could, um, not the entire pipe, because it runs back, back too far back up there, but we've replaced. The problem is the pipes were all separating from the structures. It's a plastic pipe going into a concrete structure, 12 to 16 feet below the ground, in, and part of it was just the storms we had last fall really did us in with some blockages and the water backs up. And as soon as you get any sort of seepage around these structures between the pipe, it's like a vacuum. It starts sucking all the material down and it creates the problem and then the land starts sinking. I will tell you that in our in our educational facility plan for this year, there's $300,000 to fix the rest of these structures at Fleming on High. So we're doing these because the contractor's on site and all of these that we've done so far connect to something going to that building so we could do it. Otherwise, it, the ones on the other side of the campus are out of the scope of this project. So the only change orders we've had directly related to the ACE building are direct purchasing savings and we saved $721 on changing a ceiling. So they're actually ahead of the game. Drainage on site is not doing well. <laughs> How much? Or this one is $46,000. Plus three for the architect. But if we don't touch it, there's potential that would cost us. Or, oh, right. it could cost we, we, no, we have to do it. Yeah. It's a matter yes. of when. We're there yeah. now. The contractor was digging. We yeah. mobilized, so we fixed the ones we could immediately. Mr. Collins, do you think we're going to have sinkhole issues at that site? I mean, that sounds um, an awful lot like we, it. We have, the, yes. <laughs> no, not, not saying that. I mean, we're you're, you're we're, getting into what, that, what, what my degree is in. What, yeah, like, we're monitoring the others. There, some of the other structures are compromised already. We've made short-term repairs, but we need to get, get in and fix some of them and replace some of the piping at two, at least two other spots on the campus. Yeah. So this is the gift that just keeps on giving yeah, every month. Yeah. We're going to just put you up. Well, you, you will see more drainage work on the campus throughout the rest of the year. So Ms. Bush just plan on having an agenda for Fleming Island High School. Uh, I, I, I will say this. But you have to have the ACE testing But the project oh, is on schedule. Yeah. Oh, and be sure to put the uh, yeah, ACE test testing test, facility yeah. because that kind of uh, opens helps the us. eyes. Yes. Yeah, it helps us to focus. I will say this, this Mr. McConnell, Mr. Sorry, Connell, not McConnell, like that. Is that fantastic job. He's, I know y'all were looking oh, forward to awesome. agenda item 32. Yeah, he keeps coming every morning. <laughs> See you next month. <laughs> You're up next time, Phil. I see 33 is, um, we're just closing out the Clay County Utility documents for Discovery Oaks and uh, Elementary School. Thank you. C34, substantial completion of Discovery Oaks, just uh, bringing it to a close. Beautiful job, did a, oh. uh, did a fantastic job. It's beautiful. That is it's cool. amazing. Making yeah. progress. What fun. That is progress. It, it does bring progress. C35 is change order number seven for Discovery Oaks. We, as you, when you get into uh, the work, you start seeing the adjustments and changes for us and the number of things that we had to add and address is linked in here. Once, once you get on campus, you start seeing the kids flow and change to get there. C36 is, uh, sorry, that was the one for changes. We added concrete for sidewalks, uh, evacuation signage. We had uh, tax trips, parking lot signage, electronic, uh, additional electronic outlets within the school. So adding, adding, adding to make sure it's up to par. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Crosswalk at Discovery Oaks, everything's good with that? Okay, we're going to have to, oh, I know that they're doing another, <coughs> they're going to do a survey, I believe, 
to see if anything else had to be added for another month term lane, maybe? Yeah, or so, something like um, that? Uh, or is the there, county there's may no have, problem? Yeah. There's no problem. So we're aware. they, they okay. have the crossing I was just, guards day two to, to two of them. We've got some signage on, mm -hmm. on, on site. We're going to change a couple of stop signs. I won't mention any board members who had drove, drove through while we were there. but. <laughs> I'll go back and watch video. I mean, the color of the There's color only five more. Yeah, five more. <laughs> yeah. uh, only four of us were there. And, yeah. we, and we agreed with the sheriff's office. The stop sign just we can't figure out why it's there. So yeah. there's some signage okay. tweaking, but uh, traffic control um, improved greatly within the first three days. Just once everybody got the hang of it, and so it was going in, very cool. I say to the chair, I live in the commuter. There's, there's five board members that drove through that sign. <laughs> okay. well, I, I didn't even see it. I okay. Y'all wait until Sandy and Kenny Wagner meet. Oh, that's what right. 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 he asked me. says, why is that sign even there? We were on a tight schedule. Did you want to see if anybody's paying attention? There's a. I should have seen what's going on. So I would say that I live through the chair. I live in this community, and I can't tell you how you know the community's raving about the the school, the intake, the the dismissal process. The beautification of it, the teachers, and they love. And the community says this stop site was was definitely needed. So thank you. I know we talked about many options, and that was a freeway on there. So it's it's, it's been well. Uh, also, a reminder of the dedication, Nicole. The dedication for Discovery Oaks is Tuesday, September fourth, six o'clock. At what time? Six six p.m. And that's for the community, and will it be open for people to walk through? And we will work to send. I, yeah, we will work to send it in the next in the next 48 hours. We'll have a, a similar proposed agenda. If you see something push back, and say, "Hey, ask them whether something different." So new for me. So we'll, we'll talk to people. Done for. <laughs> All right. Um, discussion item one is human resources special action. Good. 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 Item two is salary supplement for superintendent of schools. I spoke to each of you about this the other day. Um, I have a question about that. Should this be coming from you or should this come from one of the school board members? Because oh. I would be willing to put my name on this if totally up to you. If I would I I've been thinking about this for well since we got our grade, I'll be honest. And we came up to eighth in the state from where we were. We are an A school district. And I think back to when Mr. Owens was having, getting all of the um, stipends, I think is the official term that we use. Mr. Owens had the stipend at least, I know, for a number of years. 2000 and to 2013, a supplement was given to the superintendent. No, uh, this and then was given to Wiggins was superintendent. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, thank you. I didn't know if it was. <laughs> 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 I just said it in the 90s. I went back to yes. 2000. Yes. 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 We're talking, and, and, she was and super, she signed my diploma, so 12, she was superintendent in 1991. Well, she was superintendent 84 to 88 and 88 to 92. She and so, out, and she had the supplement you. then. Mr. Owens had the supplement. Mr. Wortham had the supplement. Yeah. And I know that Mr. Van Zandt had the supplement, if I'm not mistaken, sure. the first year, maybe, and I know after that it was dropped. And, well, and, and, and if I may finish, just looking at the way that our school system went during a few years during that time also, I didn't feel that it was um, just earned. Justified. I didn't feel that it was earned. And in this situation, you've been on the job now for 20 months, is that correct? 20 months. I, I should know because so right. so you and I have been the same. for the same number. <laughs> and we have come up to an A school district. We have come back to where we were when I first started teaching, which was 17 years ago. And we are now eighth in the state. And it's through the leadership that you've created and that you've brought to us that we've been able to do this and those of the people around you as well. And if it would be more appropriate for a school board member's name to be on this, I don't know what the tradition is in how we do the supplements, if this is just a given. Um, 
Is there got, he's got, can place he's got on Mr. Bryce, he's dated us the so. contact on there. Okay, so it would be through the, okay, I, I didn't know if that it was just, something I'm just that looking I, at the uh, thing, it says uh, contact David Broski okay. for Human Resources. But, and I was just That's throwing that out, that I didn't know if that was from. something that we could do or not. I, I don't, I, I think that Mr. Broski bringing it up would be incredibly appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate for you to bring it up and say I think I should get it. And I, I would, be yeah. more than happy to put my name on this let as well. Me, I'm just throwing that out. I let don't me ask know if that's you this. Necessary. This is an agenda review to review items for the superintendent to explain mm -hmm. what and why and so forth. Um, do y'all think this is the appropriate time for me to tell you my feelings on this or do you want to wait to the board meeting? I'm fine with waiting. Just wait to the board meeting then. Because okay. there's a history on this and uh, I'm not looking at the person in the job because I think it's very well known that I am mm -hmm. probably one of your strongest supporters, but there is a history since 84 with this, mm -hmm. uh, or 85, I don't know if she got it the first year she was in office or the second year, I don't know, but I know it was when she, um, when Ann Wiggins was elected superintendent and Jim Sowell was her deputy superintendent, and he had been around for years and his salary was more than the superintendent's salary. So they gave a $3,000 supplement so that she would make more than her deputy superintendent. Uh, I'll be happy to walk through it at the board meeting. There is a history here, but that supplement, every time the administrators got a raise, they were given a raise to that supplement. And then whatever year we discontinued it, and I don't remember the year. What year was it? 12, 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it came to my attention that that supplement all those years was being given raises, and it had, and the $3,000 supplement was now $28,900. Mm -hmm. So it the was, raises got added to the supplement? They, so read, the they were given a raise to the supplement every time they got a raise. So the 3000 became 289 and I said, this is not right. Now, in the years <laughs> since then, if it had continued on, there's no telling what it would be now. It could be 40, 50, I don't even know, but it was growing mm -hmm. this way. And so I said, this is wrong. This can't be, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we're going to have a supplement more than their salary if we keep this up. It's just not the right thing to do. So I, I said, you know, I can't go along with this. I am not thinking about the person sitting in the job. I am a strong supporter of Mr. Davis, but I am having a hard time um, working through this in my head. There's still a lot of homework I want to do on this, and, and I'll just sit down and talk to you uh, when I have a chance, but I was given a sheet when I mm -hmm. questioned about the superintendent salaries in selected counties, and there's one, two, three, four, seven here for a comparison, so, you know, I could see it. And so I asked Ms. Bush, I said, how many of, I asked Mr. Davis, I said, how many of these are appointed and how many of these are elected? He said, I think there's a good mix. I asked Ms. Bush, which ones are appointed and which ones are elected? Of those seven, only one was an elected superintendent. Which one is that that's elected? Uh, uh, Marion County, Marion mm -hmm. County. Alachua, Duval, Flagler, Lake, St. Lucie, and St. John's are appointed. Now, and I understand they're all superintendents in districts, but the state, I believe, sets the superintendent salary like they set our salary. That's what I thought as well. And so, but, but counties, the law says counties can give an additional <coughs> money, you know, if the board so desires. And uh, uh, and I think that is because elect, uh, appointed superintendents bargain for their salary sure. when they take the job and they mm -hmm. make more money than elected superintendents. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to see, because I'm trying to do diligence and do my homework <coughs> and be transparent about this, Ms. Bush, I would like for you to provide to the board that counties in Florida designate whether they're appointed or elected and I want to see the salaries for them. And, and, you know, on the elected, uh, the salary, I guess, is set by the state. I'd like to know how much of a supplement they're given. I know that's a lot of work, and it may can come from the Superintendents Association. They probably can push a button and give it to you. But I think, in all fairness, and, and I understand where Superintendent Davis is coming from, 
we were going downhill. We were going downhill fast. And so when he came in, he said, we're going to bring this district up. We are not, he, in two years, we're an A district. Mm -hmm. um, we are eighth in the state. And I have a feeling as long as he's around, we're going, you know, the push is going to be to go up. And, <clears throat> and I think a supplement is appropriate. What I am, what my concern is, is the amount. Mm -hmm. uh, when we eked out raises for the teachers and the support staff, and then uh, we're going to be spending 428000 for administrators, you know, if this is all passed. Uh, I think the superintendent does deserve something. What I want to know is what is that sweet number? You've been here two years. I'll just, you know, give you this. But I want to, I don't want to lose you, but I want to be fair. I don't want I just don't know how it would sit to the public and to our employees to give a $28,900 supplement right now. That That's just how I feel. But I want more information before I firmly decide what I, what I, as one board member, would like to do. So that's where I am. I want us to have more information. I'd like that too. I have some concerns also, especially since we're going out for a millage and we're being accused of using it as a slush fund. I think this gives the appearance that. Which is so well, unfair. I, 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 I just so don't agree unfair. Unfair. Yeah. with the timing of this. Although, you know, I do see that our grades have increased and, and everything is coming up and you are doing a fabulous job and we see that. Um, but I, I also have concerns. Dr. Lugaco, what is our overall budget? I do. It's about total in the entire, with all funds, it's about 400 million. So we're talking about a $400 million budget that is, you are the head of an organization, a business, that is a $400 million, has a $400 million budget that is the largest employer in Clay County. That's true. And I'm sitting back and I'm thinking, <laughs> I mean, I, I come from a business background as, somewhat as well. Um, and I'm looking at the supplement and looking at this is not from my perspective, not for one year. It is covering, from my perspective, it's covering the last two years because you have been in position now for close to 24 months. This is a one year, this is a one shot deal. This is not something that's going to go on this budget and you're going to get this for the next two years that you're in office. Oh, you're this not talking about shot continuing well, I think supplement. that's the intention. So, oh, the that intent is, it's continue. my understanding that this is an annual okay. supplement. Correct. All right. Thank you. And if you're, I'm just, to finish it off, for 28000 you're talking 14000 a year. Okay. Which is you, a lot less than You triggered something that, that I meant to say a while ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, don't let me lose it because it was important. The annual, the one-year supplement? Oh, that's... This is what triggered it in my mind. Not only had this $3,000 supplement gotten raises all through the years, it used to be voted on by the board yearly. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason back, maybe 15 years ago, mm -hmm. it just quit coming to the board. Right. Uh, it's my understanding right. that the staff was told that it wasn't necessary <laughs> To bring it to the board that the state didn't require the state law didn't require that anymore and that really um, made the hair on my neck stand up so we had, board so i believe your husband was on the board mm -hmm. at the time and that kind of rattled me too mm -hmm. that this thing was getting a raise every year and it wasn't even being brought to the board i did i had not a clue that it had gone up you know like that so i think it's something that you know uh, it should come to the board each year, mm -hmm. uh, for sure, whatever the amount may be. If I, if I could just interject a couple things. One, the new board policy stipulates that it must be brought each year and voted mm -hmm. by. I think board. we put that in and policy after that. And it has to be in the that. discussion we agenda. That in so the, the chance of this being slipped in in any sort of right. way now is right. impossible. But prior to 2012, that wasn't in our policy. 
right. and that's why we put it added. in the policy. Right. Right. So the current superintendent now makes less than superintendent in 2006. Yeah. Well, that's because they were getting the supplement and getting raises every year. But let's remember, no offense, Mr. Davis, you're doing a great job and we do love you, but it is an elected position that you ran for knowing the salary when you took the position. So I understand, I agree, I agree you are doing a great job and I agree that you know, something could be done. Um, I just also So have can an issue I object something? Out. One just, of the things that Mr. Davis really focuses with all of us on is performance. Mm -hmm. We're not just collecting a paycheck. We have targets yes. that we're held accountable for that we meet around this table and eyeball to eyeball or ask, where are you on your target? How close are you? Did you achieve that target? So mm -hmm. I think the board has to also consider pay for performance. What Dave just said, I was unaware of, and to me that's just like, what a shock. He's making what someone made in 2006, yet he's brought the district up to an mm -hmm. unbelievable level. Eighth in the state, there are plenty of people around the state that would grab hold of that and hold on to it tight. I, I, he's probably gonna kill me for saying this, but I'm personally aware of how many people try to recruit him away from you guys. Mm -hmm. He gets a lot of offers because he is highly, highly effective. Sure. He is very committed to this district and the work that he's done in his work history. But guys, you can't expect that he'll be here forever if, if it's just, thank you, good job, we're glad we're an A now, we haven't been an A for four years, and that's really good, and we might give you a couple thousand for that's doing right. it. You're not gonna keep someone of that caliber with that type of, a, of approach. I agree with so, you. So You're I, making me think of our best and brightest that are suing us right now, who were highly effective, best and brightest who, you know, the lawsuit that we're in with five teachers that didn't get the $1,200 stipend that they should have and they actually were and we probably spent double that in attorney fees now so, so through the chair I'm I'll, I'm I'll, I'll say honest. this I'm gonna be honest okay. with you I wish this had not been on the agenda this month right. so I think another month would have been better uh, we're right now I mean election day is tomorrow everybody is all upset uh, about the village that we have placed on the ballot they're telling us we have a slush fund. And so this has placed the board in a, a bad situation. If we say, let's give him the 28-9 supplement, those people are gonna say, see, we told y'all that they're just gonna give raises down there in their slush fund. And then if we, that's if the millage passes, then if it doesn't pass and we do this, they're gonna say, well, see, they didn't need it after all. They're giving the superintendent almost $30,000 in a raise. I just think the timing is really, really bad. Um, you had said you would like for the board who is sitting here to vote on this because we have worked with you for the two years, and I understand that. But that board is going to be sitting here um, October and November because the November organization meeting is toward the end of the month. We will have a meeting the first Thursday we'll of October, board. November. Might be, might be. I just wish that it had not come up right this minute. Uh, that, but yeah, that's, but it's on the agenda, so that's it. But I do want some more information before I figure out what I want to do. So, so I'll say it to the chair, there's never a good time. So no, there's never no. a good time to speak to raises, never to bring a, a good time to have uncomfortable conversations. So, uh, is, you know, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I'm bringing that to you. And at the end of the day, when you talk about elected versus appointed, you, while it may be good information for you to have, for each of you to have, you have to really look at number of schools, number of students. Yeah. The job is the same. So the job, just because, I mean, I give you an example. If you look at Lake, they're 37,000, they are appointed. My job and that superintendent's job are the same, yep. regardless if they're appointed or elected. It doesn't mean that that we are elected and you work less hours. It doesn't mean you take less phone calls, you have less emails, you have uh, less initiatives, projects, or, or, or targets. Yep. The work is the same. So as a board, you know, my name's not on this indirectly, and I would say that you have to determine overall 
the worth and the value and the scope of the work of the superintendent, regardless if Addison Davis is in this position or not. If you look at the positions that, that were provided to you by human resources, it's a number of schools, students, a number of employees. It's all consistent in the work. So, you know, it, it's up to you, and um, you'll have the opportunity to determine whether or not, you know, you support or you do not. From my side, I want to be in Clay County. I say that openly. And way it may be uncomfortable for you, it's, you know, I did run and take a position that was elected and then take a pay cut. I did. Because I wanted to work for Clay County and I want to be in Clay County a long time. So um, it'll be up to you to determine your, uh, you know, whether or not you support or not. And, I mean, that's your individual selection. I will, regardless of what you do, I will continue to work hard for the kids in Clay County every single day. I would, I guess I'm of the old school. It just seems like a lot at one time. I, I, I'd rather kind of ease into this. I mean, you've been here two years. We've I'm, got three years. We've got. Yeah, four, I'd say we've got things through the chair. There's really no easing. It's part of. I mean, it's. You know. Can I ask a well, quick question? The majority yes. will. Do you know uh, offhand how much Ben Wortham got in his last year? Oh no. Maybe I mean, as a stipend. Or is the stipend determined by the state in any way, shape, or form? No. Or so, 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 Chair, my understanding is the stipend hasn't grown in years. It stayed the same for it's been many, the same many, many, many years. Well, it's it's last, just when the administration yeah, got Prior, right. prior years is, that Ms. Stutter no, may speak yeah. of, it may have, I mean, We're I doing probably the administration did. Yeah, eight, nine, but we don't it have was 29501. Yeah. So, this. State. In 2008 or 9. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, it's the same as it was then. But that's so the exact same thing. We but we weren't getting it, and it, we, it wasn't coming to the board, and we didn't know it existed. I understand that. I understand. Well, you knew it existed. We should probably catch it. I didn't know it existed at the board meeting. Did it never yep. Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, that's all of the discussion items. Of Let's see. Questions from the audience. Wesley, you got any questions? Okay. Superintendent, comments. I do not. I was, yeah, I, I thought I sent an email this morning about a crossing guard, but it must be in my drafts because I was taking yeah. from Cole. Yeah, because and I thought it. he's so, yeah. just so good yeah, about it. I was, on, I was, on the, I was you know, was, I guess my well, apologies just, for being tardy for an hour, but I was on the phone with Action News, our staff, what's going on, who's that, oh, so, absolutely. you know. Well, I appreciate it. You're really good about that yes, stuff when things happen. That's very good. Okay, school board comments. Um, any, I have a couple of okay. questions. Our numbers? Number. So right now, yes, ma'am, we're at uh, I think thirty-five thousand nine hundred. That is not inclusive of the. I think there's around eight hundred and eight hundred plus in charter. I have to look at that. Is that include both of them? Eight, yeah, eight, 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 eight. Yes, ma'am, So we'll get we'll get that information. So we're overall from the projected numbers that we have. We are, okay. our budget is built on 37.5. Okay. Okay. I can tell you right now that we have around 36.8 or 36.9. So we're, okay. Let me back so up to the numbers. You said there was about 800 in charter and that's the classical and the clay charter and online I, 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 charter. I can send you today. But she said that there's 600 at the classical. Yeah, we got three And charters. I know that there's. I think we're about 1,200. 1200. Okay. I'll, I'll get exactly. So I'll send um, accurate numbers today. Okay. So, so, so is it so? Where are we down? Yeah. I'll send you. Uh, Just because I've had yeah. I've had a number of people say to me that they've tried to get their kids enrolled in programs and stuff, and I get I get yeah. certain grade levels are full, but mm -hmm. you know. I, I mean, had a phone call pockets. over the weekend about an exchange student that was told, nope, sorry, we're full. And I thought we were not. Yeah. We so. want to take every kid that we can in reference that meets these, either their special requests internally or, or there's open programmatic uh, okay. seats for this. On that note, I mean, how long is the waiting list at Thunderbolt? It's long. And then I've heard through long. the grapevine that they're down at FIE. They are. Mm -hmm. Would you not right advertise that to the? Yeah, I think majority of the students that want to go to Thunderbolt are already in the county, and they just want to be able to go there for convenience to the right, special request. Thunderbolt FIE. Yeah. 
quite yeah, either could. close to each other. We, so. we could look at that. Does all to be kids pick up an FIE? Yes. So that would. Yeah. Yeah. So I will send you uh, in this chart. You'll see today's. It'll be late this evening. You'll see today's. A. You'll see the actual number of students that are enrolled, along with each individual school, and whether they're up and down from the projected. But I'll give you an example. Like Argyle Elementary is probably down 50 kids. Yeah. So we have pockets that are that are down. Fleming Islands been are, are down as well. Then you have you, the Oakleaf area again is up. I mean they're like. I mean, they're building into something else. Yeah. Does that come about because of any redistricting we did when we were shifting? No, man, to people the, are moving in. But Argyle. Argyle down. Just well, shift it. It's about a 15 open. minute drive. Yeah. And I would they think you could get those kids. I mean, you know, I would think we could put Argyle, out a. We, we want them. Right yeah. There, yeah. Yeah. We want every kid to, that wants right. to come to us. The dope is open. Yeah. We're just being, but we also have consistent processes where we're trying to to follow as well. Sure. But we could reevaluate now that the could numbers it? have shaken out and you see where you have some availability yes, and where you have demand and maybe we can kind I, of I spoke yes ma'am to the chair spoke to principals the other day about potentially if they wanted to reach out and see if there are still kids that care to come and to attend and fill out the proper paperwork. And I just want to say I have ne I mean in the four years I've been on this board I have never had so many parents email me wanting a seat for their child at, a, at one of our schools and I think that that speaks volumes to the work that we've done. We are an attractive place that parents want to put their kids in school more, so. and a lot of them are from outside of our district, the ones that I've seen. So yeah, I think that that's a lot of calls. Yeah, I think that's very telling of the work we're doing. I have got one phone call, but that's I'm good for the beginning yeah. of the school. Yeah. You've I got, haven't had a bus, no, I mean, bus usually I get at least a <laughs> Not I usually get those or, or, or a class overcrowded or something. I have got, yeah, I have, got, yeah, I have got not, but you corrected it. I don't think I've gotten the first phone call. We've gotten a couple emails. And we're getting better. Send them to, I'd forward them to him. And the end. Question about you would, and I'm, I just want clarification. Yes, ma'am. You talked about going from assistant principals to vice principals. Yes, ma'am. And do and I'm I'm wonder how many assistant principals that are still in eleven months do we have? Um, I do that number. And I, I don't. I, don't I have. mean, I mean. So ultimately, the goal. If you are you asking why they're not twelve? Or, yeah. Or, yeah. I mean. I mean, because here you, again, it goes back to whether you're you know people look at summer and they're like the uh, it's time job. down. Yeah. Summer's probably the busiest time for me and for admin getting prepared for the school year. Yeah. Um, the the issue you have some that do not want to work twelve month, but we want more to work 12 months and it just uh, mm -hmm. we're just in a place we're trying to figure out phasing who wants to do it who doesn't want to do it and what we can do financially to afford it okay. so um, we, we kept it somewhat consistent based on the individual so that uh, we didn't put someone in another month who really didn't care to be there and that we didn't bring to the board additional funding as well because we just wanted to see where we shaked out okay what well, was it a few years ago we had mm -hmm. like one eleven months and one ten months. It was yeah. It that's, was, it was, was all. It was yeah, that's why I was like we had right. ten months and eleven months. Yeah, clarification. Some would come in at eleven months. Some would. It was based on number of kids in the schools. Right. But, uh, right. But when you've got just the one assistant, and yeah, anyway, and and that's there's, I think a little bit more shakedown that needs yeah, to be. money for you. The number of kids in the schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm done. Thanks. Okay, Ms. Condon. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, the meeting is adjourned.